Okay, we will start the session. Uh, today, I am going to look at uh, how to add uh, various components of a building, and uh, if the time permits, we will look at the staircase tool also. So, we will look at how to uh, uh, get the furnitures into the building. So, we can do a tutorial like this. So, we can furnish our building uh, like this. Uh, after we learn this theory, so Suppose you have a uh, <coughs> plan, so I'm going to uh, furnish this uh, building. So we, we can uh, move on to this component tool and use this uh, placer component method. So once you click that, uh, you will get uh, <coughs> say some components depending on the template you use. So you, I have this here chair. Uh, top counter top uh, desk likewise so if i want to get the uh, desk uh, you can just click on the uh, type uh, and uh, place the desk so there is a tool available here called rotate after placement that means you can place it and rotate by say 45 degrees so you can place it and rotate then and there and uh, if you want to rotate by 90 degrees, uh, you can press the shift key. So when you press the shift key, it will be 90 degree rotation. So I am pressing the shift key. You can see it's rotating 90 degrees. So remember shift key for the 90 degree rotation. Uh, so from now, if you want to get more furniture, I can uh, load the libraries. There's a tool called Load Families. So you go to these furniture folders and uh, get the required uh, furniture. Now we can get the bed here. Now, si different sizes will be loaded. But if you want to edit a size, you can go to edit type and do some size changes or uh, material changes we can do. So these are the fundamental ways of uh, getting the components into the drawer. Uh, so there is another folder available. Depending on your Revit software, you may find electrical uh, appliances or else something like this kind of a TV and you will have entourages, entourages uh, will show, give you uh, these kind of cars, vans, those kind of basic uh, shapes, say if I get this car. So these are the colors appearing uh, in real mode. This is real mode. So if you just uh, look at uh, shaded mode, it's like this. Consistent colors also something like that. Real mode is uh, giving some real colors. Then uh, you can uh, use this tool in 3D mode even. So load families. Mm. If you use Revit MEP, you will use the plumbing, mechanical areas. We have the planting, so if you want to have trees in your design, you can get the trees from the libraries. Something like this. So,
and from in areas uh, we have these fixtures like uh, sinks so you get the sinks in your drawing then uh, urinals then uh, bathtubs so all these are available so if you are using a really tiny piece of there you will find a lot of libraries uh, much more than this so we need sometimes uh, furniture interiors electrical mechanical plumbing planting those kind of libraries lighting so if i want to have a, a internal light we have these kind of lights mm. this kind of wall light i can place so some, when you place the lights uh, you, it, you it will not light up normally it will not light up so you need to run the uh, you need to do some uh, what, rendering then the lights will appear so you do these things and see and if you have any questions uh, tell me Uh, in your assignment, we may sometimes give these kind of exam uh, exercise to do. So you will be asked to place the windows, so windows, doors, and the furnitures like this. So just get used to the folders uh, uh, in the software. Questions about this? So remember that uh, shift key to rotate 90 degrees. So I'm pressing the shift key. You can rotate the component by 90 degrees.
Okay, shall I move on to the next one? Okay, so we will uh, look at how to apply this room tool. So staircases I will discuss later. <clears throat> we are going to look at how to get this uh, room calculations and area calculations. So why we are doing this? Uh, basically to get the area of a uh, room or the volume of a room. So we will look at how to get that. So I'm going to tag the rooms uh, using these tools so we, we would only need to use this tool like you use this room tool automatically the tag will happen so i'm going to apply this room tool uh, uh, in these enclosed areas so it's going to apply for level one and uh, height offset is 12.8 that is for volume calculation this height is taken and base offset is zero so from zero to 12.8 is the height of the room uh, I'm uh, tagging. So this is the room tag. So I can uh, tag this room, this room. Likewise, we can tag everything we want or else leave the unnecessary thing. Now this is a big room. So I, uh, if I try to tag some <coughs> area, it will say this is not pro pro properly enclosed. So we don't normally tag the outside areas. So I will un undo that. So this is how we basically tag the rooms so if you tag uh, then you can if you want you can change this to say bedroom likewise you can rename it easily by clicking on the tag uh, you can rename and here the number is also editable you can change the number so if you want uh, you can change these <coughs> colors even go to edit type and uh, here the color is not easily editable from here but you can get the volumes or areas on now if you press the area tool on you it will calculate you the areas of the rooms so if you want to get the volumes just uh, get the volumes here it will calculate it uh, but it will say here not computed so it's overlapping and it says no not computed so that is uh, they are not going to calculate it at once. So it says no, not computed volumes. So we can enable that. So if you want to get this volume shown here, uh, what we can do is we can come here and uh, use this area and volume computations and uh, pick this. Now it will calculate the volumes also and it will calculate the areas and all these things at wall finish. So you can change this to wall center, wall corners, likewise. Now the volume is so. <clears throat> Any questions about this? So if I just do it from the beginning, I have some partitions in your drawing. Then it's easy. Uh, go to rooms. Just uh, click inside like this. This is a big. Then uh, we can come here. Uh, if you want, you can have a leader. Leader means small arrow. This kind of an arrow is there. So leader without the leader or leader with the leader, you can have it. Then uh, we can rename this like this. Everything can be renamed. Then uh, uh, we can change the we can get the area calculations, volume calculations, but uh, both are not calculated, only the area, volume is not computed. And if you want to get the volumes on, you come here and uh, get the volumes on. Now both are calculated, but both are overlapping. And uh, 
how can we get rid of this uh, we'll discuss later so i hope you are okay with this uh, volumes and the areas are overlapping uh, we can uh, make it uh, one after the other we can edit it and here uh, now suppose if you want to partition this there is a tool called room separators so if you want uh, you can have a virtual partition like this now this is a virtual partition you see this is now reduced now i can have another room here this is a virtual line so if you just look at the 3d you see that virtual line here if you want you can right click and hide it uh, so you don't need to draw physical uh, walls you can just draw virtual line and partition it so then you can get uh, the area separately so if you just try to delete this partition it will say you have multiple rooms you need to delete this so you can't have two rooms in one area so just delete it only one maybe so we can use this uh, partition tool then partition as much as we like so you don't need to have physical boundaries always here you can have you just do it and see and any questions tell me
So I hope you are okay with this. Now we have a problem here. The problem is uh, both the volumes and the areas are overlapping. And we, we are getting this box here, which we, we, which we may need to remove. And uh, we cannot uh, change the color of the fonts. Those kind of things are not uh, capable. So here only we can uh, get the areas and volumes and the room number. Uh, but you can't change the color here, color of the fonts, uh, font shapes, those things. Uh, but now this is about tagging a room tag. But if you click somewhere here, you will find this uh, area information, volume information, area, perimeter, volume, unbounded height. Those informations are available. So if you want, you can change this height to say 10 feet. Then the volume is going to reduce here. Uh, depending on the 10 feet. So this is important when you do a uh, air condition calculation. Energy this is those kind of things. So height can be quickly changed. Now if someone tries to take this out here, it will say now it's going to be taken outside and it will not calculate. So the, there's no connection between the room uh, here, room here and the tag. So you can take the tag back here. Uh, and it will calculate again. Uh, <clears throat> suppose uh, if you have an open area, this way, this is not enclosed now. So if you want to calculate an area of a uh, open area, so you can have a virtual separator like this and get the calculations on. So if you just look at the 3D now, there's a virtual line appearing. If you want, you can hide it from this. Hide to so it's not available. So, if you want, you can unhide it. Uh, we have discussed them last week and get them. Back. So, I hope you are okay with this uh, basic room tool. Now, our problem here is uh, changing these font types, colors, and overlapping problem here. How can you do? So, if you want to do these kind of drastic changes uh, we have to change the family of the tag so we have to go excuse me uh, we will uh, change the family here so we, we are going to change the tag family edit families now you will see how the tag has been made uh, in the Revit family. So this is not an architectural mode, this is the Revit family mode. So room name is a, a parameter, room number is a parameter and the area and the volumes are overlapping here. So if you want, you can change this position like this. I just drag it down a little bit. Now this is the room name parameter. This is room number, room area, room volume. So now I have done a change to my uh, family. So if you want, you can load this change to the project, load into project. And it says override an existing parameters so or override, override the existing version. Now what happens here is the family appearance has been changed, the tag appearance. Now you can clearly see area and the volume separate. So what I did was I just went here. And you should get this family and we can change this even here so whatever the position we can take it and now the appearance is like this so this is simple you just need to change the position here uh, so if you want to uh, get the uh, say now this square shape rectangle shape is there under room name room number if you don't want this and if you want a big circle to have here, we can do a family change. Now, I will come here and use this line tools here under create. We can draw a circle. So I just draw a circle like this. So what if you, I drew a circle, but it's not appearing. It says are uh, not visible. So there's a problem of drawing. So you not you can't see the rectangle here the circle I drew you can't see but when you load it in the project 
you can see those changes. So I didn't see this rectangle in the family mode. I didn't see the circle in the family mode. So how can we see this? See the thing. So we can go to edit families. You can't see the circle again. The rectangle is not uh, here available. So there's a problem with some visibility. So you can. We have discussed these things in the first classes. We can go to visibility graphics here and uh, look at this. So all the annotations have been disabled under family mode, so you can enable it. So when you enable these room tags, annotations, generic annotations, you will see the circles and the rectangles you have drawn. So I can delete this rectangle like this. Now I have done, I have deleted that and when you load this now, the new tag will be without the rectangle. So are you okay now? I will do it from the beginning again since these are somewhat uh, advanced areas. So I will quickly do it again. Sometimes in the exam we will ask you to change the family like this. So we will do it from the beginning, take, a, take the file again and do it. So first what I, <clears throat> what I did was I tagged the rooms. Now the area and the volumes are not shown. You can get them. Now the problem here is both the whole and the volumes are not calculated. So I can come here and calculate. Overlapping. So we have to go to family level editing and do a editing. <clears throat> so the volume is volume parameter is these are all our parameters uh, get taken and uh, you can come here with under visibility graphics we can see the hidden lines. So I can see this now. So we can delete them. Sorry delete these rectangles it's up to you if your company doesn't have this rectangle you can draw whatever you like they are polygon so this is another format and you can load this if you want to save this for a future work you can come here and save this as a family so this will be saved under uh, room tags so this is a new family, so you can save it for the future. Or as for the current project, I can just uh, upload it to the current project. So this is how it works. So just do it and see, and any questions, tell me.
so if someone wants to show the perimeters uh, in this uh, diagram in this tag they can do it uh, so we will uh, do editing now before coming to perimeters and other things uh, i will just uh, try to change the label here uh, so we can uh, this is called label and this is the parameter i can go to edit type and say change this to say red color so what happens to this one now it will be appeared in red color so if you just load it your new tag the room is appeared as a red color so these are simple things the uh, only thing you have to do is uh, you have to go to this respective label and uh, change the colors so we can change the bold italic or those kind of information or else uh, uh, they change the font sizes and the others so now this is appeared as uh, this way. so you just try it and see these kind of changes also so remember how to do it just click on this label and go to edit and change the label color
okay <clears throat> so these are somewhat uh, uh, advanced areas so just learn them uh, we, we may need to generate qs tables from these parameters so i'm going to discuss uh, in detail now <clears throat> if someone doesn't want this label you can just come and delete it. now if you delete this label it will not appear so volume information is not appear so if i want to get uh, another label here or more information what we can do is we can go to create here and add the label now i want to add the label here and the set of parameters will be uh, displayed now if you want you can get a parameter called level now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show the level information in the zoom tab so i'm going to get the level information appeared in the zoom tab so the flow level information will be shown in every zoom tab as level 1 level 1 so everywhere we find level <coughs> 1 information so we don't need to type these things again and again right this making our lives easy so if you don't like this label we can edit the label and remove this label level and get the volume back so volume is again come like this now if someone doesn't like this cf or sf we can change them so the cf and sf are coming from our basic units now if you just look at the manage project units uh, volume is uh, coming as C. So if I don't like that, I can have F T S Q. Now, now the volume is appeared as F T Q. So all this information is uh, the units are coming from this uh, units area here. Uh, so if I don't like S F, I can have F T square. Uh, if you say none here, you will not find uh, what S F. Now, sometimes in our country, we may write SQFT, square feet. So, if you want to get SQFT in your tag, uh, we can do what? We can, if you just go here and look at here, we don't find that word SQFT, square feet. So, we cannot add SQFT here, but uh, we can do it for the family. Now, I can add that as a suffix so for he, to here i can add the suffix called sqft so this will uh, everywhere this will appear as sqft so don't worry about this sf sf is turned off and uh, sqft is a uh, appear so you see how it works so we can have our own uh, units, own suffixes and prefixes. Now uh, we can do this way. If I want, I can have, say something like this: this area, uh, colon, space, and space. So I have put up area is equal to this much. So what happens here now is it's appearing like this area uh, 800 g square feet so what what i did was first i went to project units and uh, remove this as none otherwise if you have sf sf and sqst or everything is overlapping so i said none here then i did what i came here and then the family label to area is qft so these things can be easily done so if you want you can have add another label like uh, perimeter so perimeter and both are so what is this break break is area then the next level perimeter will appear otherwise if you have this kind of information all all the things are coming in one line 800 square feet this is the perimeter so if you want to have a break between them just have just edit this and apply a break now there 
one after the other, it will appear this way. So square beams and the perimeter. So just do it and see. Uh, so you will be, you'll be able to end uh, whatever you like from this list. Volume, perimeter, occupancy, all these things can be added to the uh, tank. Any questions? Uh, these may be somewhat uh, advanced.
Shall I move to the next area? We will again come back to this uh, when we discuss the giveaway table. So please remember the things I did uh, today. I will upload these things into the LMS soon. The video you can again look at it. Uh, so we will keep this uh, at the side and uh, look at another theory called <coughs> area tools. Now I have discussed these things. I didn't uh, teach you this one. The tag is automatically coming. So this is the tag. So you don't need to come here and do the tag. From this tool, tag is automatically coming. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to apply some areas now. So you may wonder what is the difference between the area and the room. Room tool also gives the area, and the area tool is also giving the area. But here there's a difference between major difference between room and area. In the area tool, you can't get the volume, and the area tool has this uh, rent area and gross area. There are two uh, concepts <coughs> which is not available in room tool. Now, I want to uh, place some areas here. Now, this drawing is not now covered with these rooms, rooms, rooms everywhere. So, if you want, uh, you can place the areas in the same plan, or else uh, you can get a duplicate of this. Now, <coughs> I can get a duplicate of the level one without the dimensions like this. So if this is without the dimensions and other information, I can just get a duplicate. So I got a level one copy. Original level one is with the room tag and the dimensions. Uh, this is a copy. So why I got that was uh, otherwise every, everything will be in one drawing. So it's going to be difficult to read. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define the area plan. So why we are doing this uh, uh, in chapter 16 uh, we have area legends. Now this can be done. Something like this can be done using area tools. So room tool cannot support this. So area tool will support uh, this kind of a thing. So I, that's why I'm discussing this. So what we do is here, we define the plan first. Uh, it is uh, either rentable or gross building. So if you take the gross building, level one. Uh, okay. It will ask you to create the boundary lines. So I'm going to say yes. What happens here is software is going to create the Gross building boundary line. So he's taking the wall also to the calculation. Now, if you just uh, say rentable area, level one, yes, he's taking the inside of the area, uh, building. So he's not calculating this wall area. So rentable is whatever we can rent. So this is the rentable blue line then uh, we will not separate these uh, partitions so what i did was i chose the plan rentable logos building then i can uh, define the area boundaries so you just click here it will say, say pick line so if you want you can draw the boundaries so i, I draw the pick the boundaries like this so you can see how the area fully has been working so i don't need to actually clean this area clean this and trim the things this is working so we don't need to uh, trim and get the things perfectly this is fine no problem now i have defined the plan now next thing is i have to define the areas now this is one area another area area area, area like this so these are the uh, rentable areas in the building. So you can double click here and change this to the bedroom or something. So you can get the area when. Say similar concepts. If you just click on the tab, you can come here. Uh, we don't have much information. We don't have volume information. We have only the lead. And uh, this uh, area bound is also shown. You don't find any volumes here. 
only area and the periphery. So I will do this again. Repeat. So what we did was we first have uh, got a duplicate. So this one also we can do it. So if I just do it for this plan, level one automatically create the boundaries. Yes. Rentable boundaries taken. Then you see uh, the he is going to create a duplicate anyway, so I don't need to manually to create a duplicate. He is going to create a duplicate here, level one. So software is uh, doing that for me, so I don't need to actually create a duplicate. So don't need to create a duplicate. Just leave the software to handle that. Uh, then uh, we can uh, uh, separate the boundaries area boundaries this is uh, separated then we apply we get the area tag similar to the roofs but we have rentable and gross building that kind of uh, uh, those kind of options now uh, <coughs> now we can change the family again from here and some uh, add some labels so change the font shapes those kind of things can be done so similar concepts and if you want you can add the label new label somewhere here uh, you will not find a lot of information like the room you will have a limited number of uh, labels parameters so if you want you can have this area type shown to the customer Your area type load this Alright, this, this is so. Any questions up to this? So we can add labels or create a line like this. Just do it and see, then I will discuss how to color this uh, like this. So, the next uh, topic is how to color this. So, just uh, do it and see. Any questions tell me? So, if the font size is not enough, you can uh, go to edit type and increase the font sizes.
okay up to this point is this too much Now, uh, shall we move on to the coloring? So, I develop this uh, area plan based on the cross building, sorry, rentable area. Now, we are going to color this. Now, where can we find that? Now, to go to annotations here, you will find that uh, color fill legends. So, you, if your buttons are Somewhere else, uh, tell me. So I'm using AutoCAD Revit uh, 2015. Uh, color fit legends. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do, please look at uh, the process. So you go to annotates here, get the color fit legends, and just place the uh, legend somewhere in the screen like this. And software automatically finds out the rentable or the gross building you have, the interval I have. Okay, now what happens here is everything is going to be colored in green uh, according to building common area. Plan. Now, if you want to color something like according to the areas, like this way. Uh, we need to define that scheme. Now, this scheme is identifying the common area so everywhere it's common that's why you have a single color so if you click on this uh, you can change the screen so now it's identified the common area area type whether it's rentable or gross building so here if i change this to area now it's going to be recolored and uh, it will identify over each and every area and give a color so if you want you can change the color from this uh, so color switch also so it's a solid color if you want you can have a hatch now if you press ok this will be colored like this so this is now according to the uh, individual areas so the unit C is not shown here because I have not uh, switched on the units here if you want you can have it except for again or SQFT, whatever you like. So this is rentable area legend is shown. So if you want, you can double click here and change this title even. So if I want, I can have rent, uh, rentable area. So this is rentable area. So the title can be changed from here. Like this. So this is individual values. Uh, if you want, you can show this to a name or a perimeter. So, perimeter, it will recalculate this and show it to perimeter. So, this is really easy, not like AutoCAD. I don't need to color this uh, manually. So, just do it and see. Uh, we will do it again from the beginning. 
So after defining the areas, go to annotate, get the color field legend. Have something like this printable area. Okay. Then I edit the scheme according to area by value. So individual values will be shown in different colors. Okay. Just do it and see. Uh, and units, uh, I think I am not getting it uh, because I have turned this off here. So it will appear here as well as here. So I hope you are okay with this. Now we will look at some more editing. Um, now I gave uh, colors based on individual values. So if you want, you can give uh, as a range. Now when I give this one, uh, now my individual values are 71 up to 3,300. Uh, so if you just press this one, 
it will give you only two colors to less than 23 this is more than 20 so you will not uh, get that variations correctly so we have to edit that scheme so we have to add more variations like uh, so this can be thousand so this can be 500 something like this this can be 250 so i'm coming in the reverse manner because these these are uneditable so that's why i'm coming in the reverse 100 this may be 50 likewise uh, so if you try to edit this one there's a problem because this is uh, if you exceed this value there will be error coming so that's why i came in the reverse because we can't change this value uh, okay now it will give different colors so this is important when you have a lot of areas in the building otherwise yeah, if you have 50 areas you can't have 50 colors individual colors so it's difficult so your legend will be very big so in that cases uh, you can use this kind of a register uh, by value tool is good for good when you have limited number of areas if you have around 100 areas to show this is going to be difficult that's why we use by range uh, you just look at the maximum values and add the uh, necessary amount of uh, ranges and uh, this can be changed from backward so I, i'm going from backward otherwise there will be an error popping up uh, 250 likewise we can have some values apply then you can get something like this depending on the range just do, do it and see also if you are okay with the Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
so i hope you are okay with this uh, now if you look at this editing edit type uh, we can change the fonts here title text these kind of things uh, we can change and these square sizes we can change such so sizes can be changed now if i just press on over it here these are tiny now so font sizes all these things can be uh, adjusted so now there is underline coming so those kind of facilities are given uh, in this edit type here. so we can't double click and do these changes not, not like autocad so you need to know the correct methods this is going to change the scheme and this is going to change the fonts and the other uh, information <clears throat> i hope you are, you are okay with this uh, you you need to sometimes uh, color your areas in the assign uh, exam we give so please remember this technique so if you just go to level 1 again you will find the room information and uh, If you want to get the area information, just go to area plans and get that uh, information from there. Are you okay up to this point uh, today's lesson? I will quickly look at how to do this tutorial. So, in the slides, uh, we don't have the roof information given. So, I will uh, share the roof information now. So, what are the roof types? Those things. Uh, I think I gave the roof for you in the first day. So, uh, this is the this is our roof. So, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to share the pages now.
so uh, the book we are doing is uh, it's a uh, in maybe you can find it in the internet so i am doing some old version but uh, uh, this is this book we are doing so this is the book we are we do so so i am doing this chapter 8 now so if you can find the book uh, from the internet or download it just get it the latest version also available so uh, now i will share the images with you so this is the roof information we need to use so the floor informations are Uh, LW concrete on metal desk, ceiling tiles, these things, uh, and I'll show you how to draw the roof. Roof is uh, it's a hip roof, basic roof insulation on metal deck (BPDA). So the drawing is like this. So we need to. Uh, Draw this outer boundary, and uh, we will look at how to do that. So, the roof uh, type is insulation on metal deck EPDL. Then uh, it says the other information. Uh, if roof with slope. Four by two L, uh, roof level for this kind of information given. So this is four by two L, hip roof. So I apply the slope here. Four by two L is the slope. Then uh, overhang is given as four feet. This is the overhang. So I can just. Uh, This is four by two L. Four by two L. So this way we can quickly draw it. So everywhere it's uh, sorry. Everywhere it's uh, four by two L. So after you do, draw this outer boundaries, uh, then press OK. It's placed in level one. Now if you do this one, then there will be a problem coming. This boundary is on the level one, so it's on the level one. So I can take it to roof level. So now it's not attached. So we'll uh, try to edit the footprint and come back. 
fill ask you to attach so attach it automatically that will happen so this is how it uh, appears i think i made a mistake here uh, this is wrong it should not be drawn like this way i made a mistake so this line is wrong so it should uh, close like this so i can uh, use this trim tools here and do this so this is the appearance Here uh, we don't have an overhang, so this this area we need to delete. So we we are getting the line uh, some something like this. Uh, so uh, we have an overhang. So so we have the overhang something like this. Press OK. This is your. Then uh, this area we have a flat roof. So the same roof type, no slope. Overhang is uh, zero. Don't have a partition here, so we just uh, after do it uh, in the example. They have the partition. This line is there, so I don't have that partition this side. So we will just uh, do it manually. Something like this. So my drawing is not hundred percent accurate because of this. Partition is not available, so uh, this kind of flat roof can be drawn, and uh, it's also in level one. Sorry, this should be in level two level. Should be going down minus one foot and four inches. Uh, so, if you do it accurately, uh, you can get the shape. Uh, just try it at home and see. So, this kind of appearance it, you will you get uh, this. So, I'll share the information here just uh, follow this information overhang is given uh, flat roof information given slope is given so all this information is given Any questions up to this uh, chapter 7? So we didn't have, uh, we don't have time to do chapter 8. Uh, next week uh, we, are, we, are going, we are going to start chapter 8. And quickly cover chapter 8 and uh, come, in, come into this uh, project details. I actually have only one, one six hours more. So uh, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Uh, so we will look at the staircases and look at project details, how to get the schedule and how to get the drawing sheets in the next couple of days. Any questions up to this point, you just you practice this 
examples at home practice the past papers and get used to the software uh, So I will wind up for today. Uh, so if you don't have any questions, I will stop the class. So the next day we will look at chapter 8 STR cases and uh, I am going to discuss these uh, schedules if time permits. Probably we can do it and the, how to create the drawing sheets and uh, do the get the drawing sheet in a proper manner. So these areas will be covered in the next classes. Uh, so, hope you understood today's lesson. Uh, thank you for participating.